Okay, take two. <laughs> All right, so I was trying to go live on my personal page as well as my business uh, or my ministry page, but it just wasn't happening. So anyway, um, so I'm just going to share with you guys here on my ministry page, and then I will um, share it to my personal page. Okay. Alrighty. All right. So um, today I have the day off from work, but I have a ton of things I need to get done. So I literally only have about 20 or 30 minutes to share with you guys. And so um, probably a couple of weeks ago, I started what I did not realize was going to be a, um, a, uh, a series of messages on the languishing church. So I'm just going to rewind a little bit. So one day, actually the Lord has been speaking this to me in prayer for several months now that the church of America, the bride of Christ, um, is suffering, is languishing for a lack of self identity as sons and daughters of, of God, of Christ. And so, um, one of the reasons that we are suffering in that identity is because we don't really have a full knowledge, a full uh, understanding of the love of God for us. And so, the last time I shared, I sh and so I'm sharing from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 16 through 19. A couple of days ago, I posted a message on just verse 19. Today, I'm going to share a message on just verse 18. By the way, it is unseasonably warm here in Texas today. I have the windows open and there are some construction guys outside. So if you hear some background noise, that's what it is because my windows are open because it's warm. Okay, so uh, when I shared last, um, I think on Monday, about um, I shared about... The, the uh, love of God. And so, um, so again, you know what? I just want to pull up that whole scripture. I want to read it to you real quickly. And then I'm going to give you guys my message today. By the way, I am sitting in my room on my bed. So um, you guys have been welcomed in to my uh, personal space. <laughs> okay, here we go. So Paul was uh, praying for the uh, Ephesian Christians and he was writing to them. And he said, for this reason, he says, I kneel before the Father, and, and he says, and I pray out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his Holy Spirit in your innermost being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. He said, I pray that you would be rooted and established in this love, have power to to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and that you might know this love that surpasses and therefore that you might be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. Okay, so if you missed my last message on that last verse of verse 19, um, I want to encourage you to either reach out to me today or um, go to my YouTube channel and subscribe because every time I share live here on Facebook um, or in um, Instagram, then I, um, I upload it to my YouTube channel, okay? All right, and also, um, if you are a follower on my ministry page, all you have to do is set your notifications so that you'll get an instant notification notification whenever I go live on my ministry page. Okay. All right. So rewinding just a little bit. So I had talked about how, um, the love of God that, that Paul was describing there is the word agape love. Now this word agape love is so broad. Um, in fact, I think the next time I share a message, I'm going to share a little bit from the scripture that says that while we were still yet in sin, um, God showed his love for us by sending Christ to be our savior or something like I'll have to get the, the scripture for you exactly. But that but that scripture talks about while we were yet in sin, it actually is in a, uh, I believe, I'm going to have to look this up. Um, I forgot um, my English grammar, I think present participle or something. While we were yet sinning, Christ died for us. Okay. And so so I know that that's kind of a that's kind of a broad understanding of love, but here's what I want you to think about: not just before you came to know um, Christ as your Savior, not not just before you came to know God as your heavenly Father, did He love you while you were yet in sin? The Bible talks about the fact that yet while you are yet sinning, that Christ's love for you is extended. Now I don't believe that that gives us a license to sin. Because I believe the more that we fall in love with God, the more we fall in love with his son Jesus, the less desire we will have to sin. 
but um, it is this agape love. I, I spoke about this the last time that I, I shared a message that it's almost like having on rose colored glasses. I had talked about the Song of Solomon and how Solomon looked at his bride and he saw her through the eyes of God. Like he could, he loved her so much. He was so enamored, enamorously in love with her that he couldn't see any of her flaws. He couldn't see any of her shortcomings. He couldn't see any of her mistakes and failures. And that God loves us that much times a gazillion times more. So what I want to do is I just want to take you, I just want to take you real quickly through Ephesians chapter three, verse 18. And we're going to look at this scripture where it says, he said that I pray that you might be able to comprehend with all of the saints the um the what is the breadth the length the depth and the height of God's great love for you okay because i believe in that i believe as we walk in an expanded awareness of that that is one of the key elements that is necessary for us walking in that measure of the fullness of god and so um in verse 19 that's where he'd said that um so that you would um that you might be filled to the fullness of, of the glory of God. Well, the glory of God, the fullness of God is walking in this amazing understanding of his amazing love for you, okay? When you, when you get that, like you will be changed in such a way that the things that once were attractive to you that might be displeasing to God become no longer attractive to you. You fall so in love with the Savior, that he changes your heart with his love. It's not it's not a great it's not a grace by works. It's a grace by faith and it's a grace by experience. Okay. All right. So so here we go. So I'm going to give you um a strong concordance breakdown of Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 18. So Paul prayed that we might be able to comprehend this love. So that word to be able means to be eminently able to have strength. It means entirely competent. So it means that we would not just be somewhat able to comprehend God's love for us or somewhat competent, but that we would be fully competent, fully able to completely grasp the idea of this amazing love from a, a heavenly father who loves us in a way that we that we are not capable of loving others with because we're not God. Okay, so he prayed that they might be able to comprehend. This word comprehend is an amazing word. It means to lay hold of. It means to take possession of. It literally means to make something your own. So Paul prayed that the Ephesian, that the Ephesian Christians would be eminently able and strengthened to fully comprehend, to take complete possession of, to completely make their own the knowledge of the love of God. Okay. So I'm going to go on to the, to the next, um, next part of the verse. It says that they might, uh, it also means to lay hold of with the mind. Okay. All right. So, um, but it says that he prayed that they might be able to do this with all of the saints. And I always wondered what, I mean, I've read that scripture many times and I didn't understand what that meant with all of the saints. Well, why does it matter if I'm able to do that with all of the saints? I can do that on my own, in my own prayer closet, in my own relationship with God. And as I went to the Strong's Concordance and I looked up what it meant with, that word with means together in unity or fellowship. It means together in companionship. It also means together in possession. And this kind of made me realize this is why going to church on a consistent basis is so important. It's not that our salvation depends on it. It's not that going to church makes us a better Christian. It's not that we, you know, mark off this thing that, oh, I, I did that, you know, for God or with God this week. No, 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 no. What happens is, is when we walk in fellowship and companionship with other believers, we share the testimonies of God's amazing love and grace in our lives. And then together we have an ownership, a greater ownership, a greater possession, a greater understanding of his magnanimous love for us. 
So when we only experience, when we're only walking in our own experience of God's love for us, well, it might be a little bit limited. But when you are walking in fellowship and relationship and companionship with other believers who are also experiencing the amazing love, grace, and mercy of God, and you share those testimonies and you share those experiences with one another, it begins to build your faith to the point where you're like, you know what, if they can trust God in that area of their life, then maybe I can too. Okay, so again, so I'm, I'm just, I'm going through Ephesians chapter 3, verse 18. So, um, so Paul prayed that the Ephesian churches, that the Ephesian Christians would be eminently able to have complete strength to completely comprehend and take possession of and, and lay hold of um, with, in, in relationship with, in fellowship with, in communion with all of the saints that they, that they might know what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height of God's great love. So I'm going to give you just a little breakdown of what that means. So the breadth, so the breadth of God's love. So if you if you um, look up these words in the Strong's Concordance in the original Greek language, it means a great extent, as in the opposite ends or the corners of the earth. So when Paul was talking about the agape love of God, the breadth of God's love for us is as likened as as as. The breadth of it is as big as from one corner of the earth to the opposite corner of the earth. That is a huge extent. So he, he prayed that they would know the breadth and the length. So the length uh, is um, is referenced to um, Revelation chapter 21 and verse 16, where it talks about how God measured off the length of the city of God. The city of God. Um, in paradise is humongoloid. It is humongous. And so Paul was rep was referencing the length of God's love for us in the same um, example or illustration as the length of the streets of the city of God in paradise. He says, okay, so he said the breadth and the length and the depth. That word depth is likened to the depths of the sea. So have you ever been deep sea diving? Do you actually know how deep the, the, the sea is? We actually, scientific knowledge of we only have estimates of how deep the seas really are. If you want to get an idea of just how deep the seas really are, Google it. You're going to find that the depths of some of the seas here on earth are gargantuan in propensity in 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 um size so that was the depth of the love of god that paul was praying that the ephesian churches would take possession of would take ownership of would have full comprehension of it says and the height so this word height is in reference to it is just like being exalted to the skies or the heavenlies. It also means a high rank or position. So God's love for us literally places us, it is a high rank or position that we have the, have the blessing and the opportunity um, to be recipients of the amazing grace and mercy and love of God. And here, here is, here's the kicker. So as Paul was praying this for the Ephesian churches, he kept saying the breadth and the length and the depth and the height of God's great love for you. That word and is a cumulative sort, uh, uh, force. It means and then some, and then some, and then some. So the other day when I was sharing about being full to the being filled to the fullness of God. I believe that all of us have a desire to walk in a place or a space of consistent love, joy, and peace every single day of our lives. And um, while I believe that some of uh, some of that peace, some of that joy, mm, it can be a little bit circumstantial if we allow it to be. Um, you know, the longer that I've walked with God, the more that I've come to understand that my level of joy and peace is really not contingent on my circumstances. It's contingent on my uh, relationship with God. It's contingent on my mindset. It's, it's contingent on my awareness 
of God within me, of my awareness of God's embrace upon me. And so what I want to share with you guys today is that just like I had shared the other day, that this agape love of God, I don't know if we can adequately describe in human words the height, the length, the depth, and the breadth of his amazing love for us. But as we consistently seek to walk with him in greater fellowship day by day by day, we begin to walk in a greater awareness of it moment by moment by moment. And as we do that, we begin to be filled with the fullness of the, with the measure of the fullness of God. And being filled with the measure of the fullness of God, to be honest, that is what determines your joy here on earth. That is what determines your happiness here on earth. That is what determines so many things in your life. And so, as I said weeks ago, uh, actually months ago, when God began speaking this to me, that, and I'm not even talking about people that don't know Christ as Savior. I'm talking about people who know God, okay? So those of us who know God, we are still searching for that something outside of ourselves that is going to that is going to satisfy that inner need for love, joy, and peace. Okay, we're only going to find that in the presence of God. And when you understand that His love for you so far exceeds any type of love that you've ever experienced here on earth from any person you've ever had a relationship with, even the most loving mother, the most loving father, the most loving spouse, the most loving child, the most loving family member, the most loving best friend, none of their ability to love you and express to you how much they love you can even compare with the love of God that is shown through his, Christ, his son, Christ Jesus. Okay. So that's pretty much it. That's what I'm going to share today. The next time I share again, I'm, I'm actually, God told me to go to build this. And he said to share from chapter, uh, verse 19 and then 18 and then 17 and then 16. So I've now shared from Ephesians three, verse 19 and Ephesians three, verse 18. And the reason why I'm going backwards is because what I want you to understand is just like I had shared the other day that hold on a second, <clears throat> that you being filled to the measure of the fullness of God, it is contingent. It is foundational to your understanding of the love of God for you and exactly what that means for you. Okay, so I'm making this short and sweet. Um, by the way, if, if you're getting the replay of this, either on my personal Facebook page or on my YouTube channel, again, I want to encourage you, please like, love, and share this post. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, as always, um, if there's something that about this that has blessed your day, that has been a blessing to you, that I encourage you, I challenge you to sow um, a, a seed of, of love into my ministry. The, um, the donation link is in the description of this video. Okay, but what I want to do right now is I just want to pray over you this scripture, and I want to trust that as you seek to walk in closer and closer and closer fellowship with God, that you're going to have a greater awareness and a greater understanding of this, and it is going to result in you walking in a place of love, joy, and peace consistently, consecutively, day after day, moment after moment, hour after hour, okay? Um, and by the way, um, the next time I share, I'm going to be sharing from verse 17. We're going to be talking about being rooted and grounded in the love of God. This is going to be an amazing message because what you're going to find is that some of your roots or some of your foundational understanding of what the love of God really is has probably been erroneous. I'm going to tear down some lies that the enemy has probably convinced you of. I'm going to tear down some imaginations that um, that probably the things that you've experienced in other relationships have set you up to believe that maybe God is similar to that and he's not. God is so totally different than, than our ability to love, like our ability to love other people is so even even those of us that know him as savior and lord our ability to love others is so minuscule compared to his ability to love us it's just amazing so 
Here we go. I'm going to pray. So, Father God, in Jesus' name, we praise you and we thank you for this day. Lord, I praise you and I thank you, Lord God, that for each person that, that hears this uh, message live, who watches the replay in the name of Jesus, I speak your peace, your love, your joy, your provision, your protection. Um, over their lives right now in Jesus' name. Father God, for those of them that are experiencing health concerns, I thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over their physical bodies from the tops of their heads to the tips of their toes. I decree and declare that they are healed in the name of Jesus. I command that their bodies walk in alignment with your word, which says that they are healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ. Father, for every single person that has struggled to know your word, that has struggled to know your love, that has struggled to comprehend your love for them, that has struggled to have a grasp and an understanding of what it means to be a son or daughter of God, what it means to be loved by the Most High. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father God, that you are breaking down those barriers, that you are breaking down those strongholds, that you are breaking down those mindsets and lies that the enemy has told us for years and years and years that have separated us from the knowledge of God. And so in the name of Jesus, I release a new understanding. I release a new um, level of comprehension. I release a new state of being for each and every person that hears my voice, that they might walk in an expanded awareness, a walk in, in an expanded experiential knowledge of the love of God for them in the name of Jesus. And so, Lord, we praise you and thank you for this day. We thank you for our, your love for us. We thank you that your love for us knows no limits, knows no bounds. We thank you, Father God, that even while we were yet in sin, you still sent Christ to die for us. I thank you, Lord God, that even in the moments where we are still sinning against you, even though it's not what we want to do, but it's still some of the areas that we're walking in, I thank you that you still have grace and mercy for us in those and that all you want us to do is hold on to your hand and allow you to strengthen us by the power of your love so that we will gain victory over those areas in our lives in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, you guys do me a favor, like, love, and share this video on your personal pages, on your business pages, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and please um, sow a seed, um, uh, in, uh, a financial seed into my ministry. And um, I just want to say, God bless you guys. Mwah. Talk to you soon. Bye.